Here's a lesson for section 1.4 for the grade 11 functions course. In this section, you're going to learn how to <coughs> write radicals as mixed radicals, uh, multiply radical expressions, um, and add, add and subtract radical expressions. In order to do well in this section, you're going to have to be good at recognizing um, perfect square numbers as factors within a radical. So here's just a quick list of perfect square numbers. Um, you know, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. You're going to have to be good at being able to pull out um, these perfect square numbers as factors um, within a radical expression. You'll see how that works uh, right now. I'll do a couple of examples of that. So um, here we have a bunch of radical expressions. If we're going to simplify those, what we're going to do is we're going to be break it up into uh, factors, and one of the factors has to be a perfect square factor. That way when we simplify it, it turns into a mixed radical. A mixed radical would be of the form a times root b, where we have a coefficient in front of the radical expression. Um, also to do this section, you're going to have to know this rule. You're going to have to know the rule uh, if you have root a times b. So if your radicand is broken into factors, and when I say radicand, I mean the numbers under the square root sign. So if your radicand is broken into factors like that, so the square root of a times b, we can rewrite that as uh, two separate radicals being multiplied together. We can rewrite that as root a times root b. And that's what we're going to do to write these as mixed radicals. We're going to break it up. Um, we're going to break up the radicand into two factors, and we're going to make sure one of the factors we break it up into is a perfect square factor. That way we will be able to take the square root um, of that factor, uh, leaving it as a mixed radical. So let's see how that works. So what we're going to do here, uh, first of all, we, our radical expression is root 50. We're going to break that up into two factors, one of which is a perfect square factor. Um, so if you remember from our list, um, we'll look, are there any perfect square numbers that divide evenly into 50? And hopefully you see 25, and you're always going to use the biggest one that divides um, into that number. 25 is the biggest perfect square number that divides into 50, so I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 25 times 2, because 25 times 2 is 50. 25 and 2 are factors of 50. Now, based on the rule I have written at the top here, I could rewrite this as root 25 times root 2. And now there's one last step I can do. I can simplify this. I can take the square root of 25. I know the square root of 25 is 5. So I can rewrite this as 5 root 2. So I've written root 50 as a mixed radical. And that's all we have to do for this section. So you should see the reason why we broke it up into root 25 and root 2 is because we can take the square root of 25 and get 5. Let's do this one, root 27. The biggest perfect square number that divides evenly into 27 is 9. So I can break this into root 9 times 3 because 9 times 3 is 27. Then I can further break that up into root 9 times root 3. And then I can take the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So I can write this as 3 root 3. And lastly, uh, part C, I have the square root of 180. Now, <clears throat> there's a couple different perfect square numbers that divide evenly into 180, uh, but the biggest one that divides evenly into 180 is 36. Um, 4 goes into it, uh, sorry, yeah, 4 goes into it, um, 9 divides evenly into it, but the biggest one that divides evenly into it and 16 goes into it as well, I believe. Uh, 180 by 16. No, 16 doesn't go into it. But the biggest number that goes evenly into 180 that's a perfect square number is 36. So what I can do is I can break up the square root of 180 into the square root of 36 times 5. Square root of 36 times 5 because 36 times 5 is 180. And I can further break that up into two separate radicals being multiplied together. Root 36 times root 5. I can take the square root of 36. Square root of 36 is 6. So the mixed radical is 6 root 5. Okay, next thing we're going to do is add and subtract radicals. So when adding and subtract radicals, you, it's going to work the same way as when you add and subtract um, polynomials. You can only add and subtract like terms. Or in this case, we're going to call them like radicals. 
For example, if you have 2 root 3 plus 5 root 7, you cannot collect those together. What's the important part here is the radical part of the expression. The radical part of these expressions, of these mixed radicals, are not the same. So you cannot collect those two together. However, if we have 3 root 5 plus 6 root 5, they both have the exact same radical. They both have a root 5, so we can collect those together. They have a common radical, so they can be added together. And when we add them together, the radical part of the expression is not going to change. We just add or subtract the coefficient. So 3 plus 6 is 9. So 3 root 5 plus 6 root 5 is 9 root 5. So let's practice that. So if I have 9 root 7 minus 3 root 7, the radical portion of those mixed radicals are the same, so I can collect them together by just subtracting the coefficients. 9 minus 3 is 6, and the radical portion stays the same, 6 root 7. Part B is a little trickier. Um, the radical portions are not the same for these two. This is a root 3, this is a root 27, but you should notice we can simplify root 27 because the perfect square number 9 divides evenly into 27. So let's simplify this mixed radical here. So I have 4 root 3 minus 2. And I'm going to break up root 27 into root 9 times root 3. So 2 times root 9 times root 3. And I can simplify this a bit further. 4 root 3 minus 2 times the square root of 9 is 3 times root 3. So that equals 4 root 3 minus 2 times 3 is 6 root 3. Now you'll notice that these are like radicals. They have the exact same radical in both of those expressions, so I can collect them together by just subtracting the coefficients. 4 minus 6 is negative 2, and you leave the radical the same, negative 2 root 3. Let's do one more. This um, radical has uh, an 8 under it. This radical has an 18 under it, so they're not like radicals, but let's see if we can simplify them. Uh, 4 goes into 8, and 4 is a perfect square number, so let's break this up into 5 times root 4 times root 2, because 4 is a perfect square number. And let's break up 18 into 3 times root 9 times root 2, because 9 is a perfect square number, and it divides evenly into 18. Now let's simplify. 5 times root 4, well, root 4 is 2, so it's 5 times 2 times root 2. And the square root of 9 is 3, so it's 3 times 3 times root 2. That gives me 10 root 2 plus 9 root 2. Those are like radicals. I can collect them together by adding the coefficients. 10 plus 9 is 19, and you keep the radical the same. It's just a root 2. Let's move on to multiplying radicals now. So this will be the last part um, of this lesson. We're going to learn how to multiply radicals. So when multiplying radicals, it's going to be the same as when you were multiplying polynomials together. Let's say you had a 2x times a 3x. You'd multiply the 2 and the 3 together, and the x and the x together, and you get 6x squared. Um, for this, we have 2 root 3 times 3 root 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the coefficients together. You're going to start by multiplying the coefficients, and then you're going to multiply the radicands together. Radicand, make sure you remember, that's the number under the square root sign. And then we'll simplify so, if we're going to do this, start by multiplying the coefficients, 2 times 3 is 6, and then you multiply the radicands together and put it under a square root sign. So, root 3 times root 6 is the square root of 3 times 6, which is 18. And then we simplify um, the radical expression if we can. There is a perfect square number that goes into 18. It is 9, so we'll break it up into root 9 times root 2, because 9 goes into 18 twice. Square root of 9 is 3, so it's 6 times 3 times root 2. And lastly, that gives us 18 root 2. Let's move on. Let's do one that's a little bit more complicated. So just remember distributive property for this one. If you have a times x plus y, you have to multiply the x and the y by the number in front of the brackets, and it becomes ax plus ay. So the same principle is going to apply as we do this problem here. We're going to... Let me just move this down a bit so I can draw my arrows. <clears throat> We're going to do 2 root 3 times 4 and 2 root 3 times 5 root 3. Everything in the brackets must be multiplied by um, whatever's in front of the brackets. So 2 root 3 times 4. So I multiply the 2 and the 4 together, I get 8. And you leave the root 3. 2 root 3 times 5 root 3. It's going to give me positive 10 root 9. Why? Well, 2 times 5 is 10, and then you multiply the radicands together. 3 and 3 is 9. You put it under a square root. We can simplify this further because we can take the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 
So I have 8 root 3 plus 10 times 3. And you could notice here as well, when you do the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, what happens is the square root sign actually just cancels out and you're left with just the 3. So I have 8 root 3 plus 30. And that's done. I can't collect those two things together because they're not like terms. This one has a root 3, this one does not have a root 3, so we can't collect them together. So that's our final answer. Uh, I think we're just going to do two more. I'll do this one a bit quicker than the last one. So I'm going to distribute what's in front of the brackets to both the terms in the brackets. Negative 7 times 6 will give me negative 42. Root 2 times root 8 will give me root 16. And then negative 7 root 2 times negative 11 will give me positive 77 root 2. And the square root of 16, well, I can simplify that. I know what the square root of 16 is. Square root of 16 is 4. So that gives me negative 42 times 4 plus 77 root 2. And now all we have to do is just simplify the last part. Negative 42 times 4 will give me negative 168 plus 77 root 2. Nothing else I can collect together because these two things are not like terms. And that's my final answer. The last one we have here. Oh, I think there's going to be two more, but the last one's going to be very quick. So this one, um, we have a binomial times a binomial, so don't forget FOIL. Um, what we have to do, we have to multiply <coughs> everything. So each term in the first binomial must be multiplied by each term in the second binomial. So what I have to do, root 3 has to be multiplied by the 2 and the negative root 3, and 5 has to be multiplied by the 2 and the negative root 3. So let's start off from the beginning. So FOIL means first, outside, inside, last. You multiply the first terms of both binomials together. Root 3 times 2. You could write it as root 3 times 2. I'm going to write it as 2 root 3. So it looks like a mixed radical. So 2 root 3. Then you have to do, so FOIL, the next part is O. That's the outside terms. So the root 3 times the negative root 3. So we multiply the radicands together. 3 times 3 is 9. So that gives me negative root 9. Next, you do the i, the inside terms. 5 times 2 is positive 10. And lastly, you do the last terms. So the 5 and the negative root 3. That gives me negative 5 root 3. Now there's a few things we can simplify here. I have a 2 root 3 and a negative 5 root 3. Those are like terms. I'll put them beside each other. And then I have a negative root 9. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, so I'll write it as negative 3 and then I have a plus 10. So those constant terms are like terms. 2 root 3 minus 5 root 3 is negative 3 root 3. Collect the coefficients together, you leave the radical the same. Negative 3 plus 10 is positive 7. There's my final answer. Our very last example, hopefully you noticed the special product we have here. We have a 2 root 2 plus 3 root 3 times 2 root 2 minus 3 root 3. So what we have is a difference of squares. We have Two binomials that are exactly the same, except the signs are different. So we have an a plus b times a minus b, and hopefully you remember that that equals a squared minus b squared. So this is equal to, here's my a and my b, it's equal to 2 root 2 squared minus 3 root 3 squared. So let's simplify this. 2 root 2 squared, I have to square the 2 and the root 2. 2 squared is 4. The square root of 2 squared, well, square rooting and squaring are opposite operations, so they cancel, so you're left with just 2. Root 2 times 2 root 2 is root 4. Root 4 is 2. Minus 3 squared is 9. The square root, square root of 3 squared is just 3. 3 squared is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9. Square root of 9 is 3. The square root sign and the square root cancel each other out. So let's simplify. That gives me 8 minus 27. And that gives me negative 19. And there's the final answer. And that's it for this section. Hopefully you now know how to work with radicals, make sure you um, go to jensenmath.ca, download the worksheet, and try it out.